Hi, this is Dan Sweeney, Director of the Institute for Enterprise Ethics at the Daniels College of Business here on the University of Denver campus. On May 10th, the Institute hosted an executive breakfast for C-suite executives, independent directors, and their advisors to discuss new responsibilities facing senior executives and directors. This discussion was led by Bob Vanarak, co-author with his son Greg, of Triple Crown Leadership, Building Excellent, Ethical, and Enduring Organizations. This book will be published by McGraw-Hill in July of 2012. During Bob's business career, he served as the turnaround CEO of two NASDAQ-traded corporations. Since then, he has been active as a consultant, teacher, and writer on various topics of leadership and organizational strategy. Following Bob's opening remarks, participants had a lively and robust discussion on a variety of leadership issues. Here are Bob's opening comments. My job is to be uh, somewhat provocative uh, and to be a fire starter for what I hope will be a very uh, good dialogue. I'll take uh, 20 or 25 minutes and I want to focus on my favorite topic. Uh, Greg, my son, and I, he teaches at the Royal Institute in Stockholm. Uh, we are both leadership junkies and I don't know about you but I am really not happy with the state of leadership in our world today. Whether it's Walmart in Mexico or now there's a scandal at Yahoo, you know, the resume or whatever it may be. Last year it was the Gulf oil spill. Um, Goldman Sachs, one of the great organizations on Wall Street, guy in the UK resigns with a public letter in the Wall Street Journal. The Occupy movement and while you can criticize them as being unorganized and leaving their trash here and there, they're concerned about some things. They're concerned about greed. They're concerned about crony capitalism. You know, we've got a leadership problem here. So we, um, in the research that we've done for our book, Greg and I, have come to what we consider to be an audacious conclusion, a game changer, if you will, and that is that organizations should set at the top of their priority list the goal to be excellent, ethical, and enduring. All three, the three E's as we talked about. And if you've read the chapters that Dan sent for your homework, you understand where we're coming from there. We, we say that based on interviews with over 60 organizations in 11 countries. Google, eBay, Cisco, DeVita, uh, CH2M Hill, Princeton, Yale, University of Denver, um, Dan Ritchie, former chancellor, great stories there. Uh, organizations large and small, for-profit, non-profit. And we were looking for organizations that we felt were on this noble quest. And the stories that we got were just fascinating. And so we've put them into the book around this metaphor of the quest for the triple crown in thoroughbred horse racing to win the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness and the Belmont Stakes all within uh, five weeks. In more than 130 years that's only been done 11 times. But it has been done. And so that's the noble quest that we're talking about. Now let me be clear that we don't think any of these organizations are perfect. Certainly when you talk to GE, they're trying to do wonderful things, but they're a huge organization and they have stumbles. You know, you talk to Google, they're, don't be evil. Well, well, what about privacy and what about the entrance into China and things like that? But they're trying and when they stumble, they come back. What these organizations do is develop a culture of character. We think culture is the legacy of leadership. And we think a culture of character is the legacy of triple crown leadership. And what these organizations do is they don't, when they come to a dilemma, and you're all leaders in this room, you know you're going to confront dilemmas, they don't take the easy way out. Uh, they find another way forward. They say, I've got to be excellent. Excellent means exceptional performance. It means as I learned in the business world, you got to make your numbers. If you don't make your numbers, you know, 
you're not going to last very long as a leader. Ethical means you got to do the right thing. What the right thing is sometimes requires a lot of debate, but you've got to attempt to do the right thing. And you have to do it in an enduring fashion. Jim Collins wrote about enduring a great deal in all of his books. And enduring means two things to us. One is externally, you've got to operate sustainably. You can't be polluting the air, the water, consuming resources at an unsustainable rate. But there's also an internal dimension, too. And that is that you can't be burning people out. These 80, 90 hour weeks that I was foolish enough to put in a few times, you know, that's not going to cut it anymore. And you can't be doing things to make your numbers that are unsustainable. For example, I don't know how many times I borrowed sales from quarter two to make quarter one, right? And then what do you do at the end of quarter two? You got to borrow from quarter three to make, and you're suddenly on a treadmill. I mean, I see some smiles around the room. That's crazy. You're setting yourself up on an unsustainable um, treadmill. So our audacious proposal is that some great organizations are on this noble quest to be excellent and ethical and enduring, building in a culture of character, not taking the easy way out, finding another way forward. And we unpacked in our work five practices, and I'll just briefly deal with the five, and then I'll stop talking and we'll talk about one. The five practices that we identified are head and heart, colors, steel and velvet, alignment, and stewards. Head and heart. Most organizations recruit people on the wrong basis. They look at your resume, look at your experience, look at your credentials, your CV, and all of that's important. But what we discovered is that the really excellent organizations look a lot deeper. They look for what we call heart issues, your personal character. They look for your emotional intelligence. They look for your cultural fit with the organization. The story we tell is about Zappos.com. Anybody here a customer of Zappos? Joe, what's your experience with Zappos? Pretty darn good. Customer service, pretty phenomenal. Yeah. And you, the same way? Mm -hmm. When do you get your shipment? Right away. Right away. <laughs> Overnight. Extra charge? Nope. No. What if you have a problem? Send it back. <laughs> Tony Shea, CEO of Zappos, started it with a magnificent high-tech idea. I want to sell shoes online. Shoes online? Wait a minute. You got to try them on. Maybe the color doesn't match what's in the catalog. That doesn't make any sense. Well, he said, we're going to do fabulous customer service. And Zappos now sells shoes, clothing, all kinds of things. And they grew from zero to a billion dollars in 10 years. Phenomenal. A culture of wow customer service. Story woman ordered some shoes from Zappos, um, was going on a trip. She happened to be going to Las Vegas, their headquarters, and she discovered she forgot her shoes. So she called Zappos and said, I need my shoes, I love you guys. Well, it just so happens they're out of stock. So the telephone person said, ma'am, where are you staying? And she told him the hotel. And so he got up, left, didn't ask his supervisor, because you don't have to do that at Zappos. You just do what's right for fabulous, wow, customer service. He walked the malls in Las Vegas, found her shoes in her style, color, had them gift wrapped, and personally delivered them to her hotel, no charge. And she told about a thousand of her friends, and she said, wow, this is fabulous customer service. Zappos just got acquired by Amazon, Jeff Bezos told uh, Tony Shea, we can learn something about customer service from you guys. Now, what does this have to do with head and heart? Zappos hires people for 12, 14 bucks an hour. Telephone people, forklift drivers, and they are interviewed by a panel of people. And after they determine, do you have a driver's license, can you talk on the telephone, they want to know, were you in sports? Do you play a musical instrument? Have you had any leadership things? You know, what's your character like? And these panels screen these people, and they get hundreds of applicants for each opening, 12, 14 bucks an hour. And after 
they hire them, they go through a month of training on customer service and the culture and things like that. And you know what they do after that month of training? Anybody know what they do? They offer them $4,000 to quit. Now, if you're making $12 or $14 an hour, $4,000 is a lot of money. They get about 2% of the people who take the money and run. And the rest of the people say, I want to work at Zappos. I want to be a part of this culture. I want to be there. And they just do this phenomenal customer service. Head and heart. Second um, practice area that we uncovered is what we call colors. Basically, those are the values and purpose of the organization. 